really well. He has very nice handwriting, which I appreciate. <laughs> and he does a great job of um, keeping his fat and his power. He counts them, and um, as far as I know, he has known every day in his life. So, you know, his wife found everything. <laughs> 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 Activity level is. 
If you're not able to walk, that's fine. We can start you out nice and slow, doing things in the chair, and then we'll work up from that way. Um, you also need to keep track. Just like we asked you to keep track of your calories and your foods in your keeping track book, we're now going to ask you to track your physical activity levels. And then we also want you to plan ahead, making plans to include activity in your week. So, for example, whenever you get done at work, say, after I get home, instead of going to the refrigerator and getting a snack, I'm going to go change my clothes, grab the dog, go for a walk for 10 minutes. Okay? All right. Next we have progression. Your progression will be slow and safe with increases of no more than 30 minutes per week. This is less than five minutes per day. So I think we all can add an extra minute or two every week. So it's not too bad. All right, one of the most important keys to success is making sure that you are safe, safe to exercise. Um, we require you to get your okay from your health provider. Did everybody do that? Got the okay? We're safe to exercise? Good. Okay. Um, now we're going to discuss the warning signs and when to stop exercising. So, what do you think some warning signs are for exercising? Pain. Pain. Good. Any specific areas? Chest. Chest. Good. What else? Any other areas that we should be concerned about? Joints. Joints. Yes. Very good. Um, so, if you're experiencing chest pain or discomfort, and I'm on page four, um, what is happening? You're feeling uncomfortable feeling of pressure, pain, squeezing, and heaviness. Where are you having this? In the center of your chest. It can spread throughout the front of your chest or radiate to your shoulders, arms, neck, Would jaw, and back. Exactly. Yes. So what do you think you should do when, if you're experiencing this pain? Stop. Very good. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop and sit down or lie down. If it doesn't go away in two to four minutes, go to the emergency room. If it does go away, you need to keep track of it in a book. It can be your keeping track log or if you keep um, a log somewhere else, like in your calendar. You need to take a record of it and then the next time you see your doctor, let them know. So what happens if you um, experience severe nausea, shortness of breath, cold sweats, you feel lightheaded, irregular pulse, what should you do? Stop. Very good. And then if it doesn't, this time, if it's five to ten minutes, if it doesn't go away, then we need to go to the emergency room. So a little bit longer for this one. And then, again, if it does go away, make sure that you keep track of it and you let your doctor know when you go to, to get a checkup. All of the above problems, signs, symptoms that we just went over could be something serious, like a heart problem. So you should never ignore it. Does anyone have any questions? Questions? Okay. All right, so today we're actually going to get our pedometers. So yay. So we're going to pass those out. Steven, you want to help me? Sorry. Yeah, we're getting everything fun. <laughs> and um, 
Um, starting tomorrow, try wearing your pedometer every day. Every day. No skipping. All right, when you wear your pedometer, um, you're going to clip it to your clothes at your waist when you first get up in the morning and make sure that you reset it to zero. So there should be a button on it and then it just resets it to zero. It's yellow on yours. Um, make sure it is securely attached and warm for firmly against your body so that it does not jiggle. So no jiggling. <laughs> and do not let it flop around in a pocket or on your purse. So you have to clip it to your pants. Um, make sure to keep it upright. So no upside down. It has to be up. And make sure that you do not let it get wet. And um, so no swimming. The rain should be okay. Just make sure that you know, you're know you sure something is covering it. And then um, no wearing it while you take a bath or go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Again? All right, um, take the photometer off at night before you go to sleep and write down the number of steps you took that day in your keeping track book. So it'll tell you, like, there's a number on here now, you would just write that down in your book.
it work? Yeah. Not unless you want me to talk to you. <laughs> Hey, no stopping. I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything. I'm doing I just put out what I had left. I'm sure. No, they brought some of it. So did you I just put out what we had left. I don't know. Yes, they did. This was, yeah, this was just what was left over from what I brought. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, it's uh, been one of my downfalls. Mine, too, but I didn't realize. Cheese and chocolate. Yeah. That's a bummer. <laughs> I went to a wedding last weekend.
circulation. It's from the summer. Increased circulation. Boosts your mood. You don't feel so yep. tired. You don't feel so tired. It increases your mood so you're not as <laughs> sleepy or angry. Yep, it exercises your heart. Good. That ties in with our increased circulation. Decreases depression. Decreases depression. Yep. Good job, guys. Um, it'll also help you lose weight and improve your bone density and muscle strength, thus enhancing your joint stability, your flexibility, and your balance. Bless you. And also, being more active can raise your HDL or your good cholesterol, lower your triglycerides, your blood pressure, and lower your blood sugar, and makes your body more sensitive to insulin. So, those are some added benefits that you might not have known. Alright, so next we're on page six. The goal, the goal is to do two and a half hours, that's 150 minutes, of physical activity each week. Pick activities that you like. If you don't like to run, don't go running. <laughs> so we're not going to make you do something that you don't like to do or that you can't do. Remember, we're going to start out nice and slow. Um, choose types of physical activity that are moderate intensity, like brisk walking. Work up to your goal slowly. If you can't get in 30 minutes a day, that's perfectly fine. Start with 10. Again, just add like a minute or two each week. Spread the activity over three to four days or more per week. So you don't have to do them all right at the beginning of the week unless you want to. So, but our goal is to try and be active every day of the week, but we're going to start out nice and slow. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So before we get started, let's think, of, think back to how active you have been in the distant past and more recently. So we have, we have some questions to answer on your sheet. How active are you now? So go ahead and fill that out. Um, what kind of activities do you do? Who do you do them with? And how often? How long? Take a few minutes and then we'll have you share. Which uh, page is on? It is on page six. And then you can fill out the other ones too. Are there activities that you did in the past that you no longer do? And why did you stop doing them? Where do you do it? That's cool. South Charleston, right? That's cool. Yeah, 
Yeah. You feel guilty. You feel guilty. Yeah. Okay. All right. So where should you start with your exercise? How many minutes would you say that you spent doing physical acti activity during the last week? If it is less than 60 minutes, the next week you're going to try and get up to 60 minutes. If it was 10, maybe you try 15 this time. Um, <clears throat> progression is something that we're going to need to talk about. So, for example, I'm on page 7, week 4. This person walked 60 minutes per week, 12 minutes, 5 days a week. So then in week 5, they're going to increase 30 minutes. They're going to walk 90 minutes which is only an increase of six minutes per day. So they're still walking their five days per week, but they're just adding six minutes. So this is a good example of your progression. And if this is too much, that's perfectly fine. Just increase it by a minute or two each time. So what are some different types of aerobic activity? Swimming. Walking. Walking. Line dancing is great. Bicycling and elliptical, I heard say, someone say that earlier. Um, walking outdoors, <coughs> indoors, doesn't matter where. Skating, skiing, that was mentioned earlier. What else? Water aerobics. Has anyone ever done water aerobics? Yes, yeah, oh, I, I teach water aerobics in Morgantown too, and it's so much fun. Oh, yeah, it is. Good. All right. So next, we're going to be on page eight. And last session, we asked you to pay attention to the activities that you did throughout the week. And you're going to um, fill out the questions on this one. So set aside blocks of time throughout the week to be active. When can you set aside blocks of 15 minutes or more to do an activity that you like? So kind of think through your day. When do you think is a good 15-minute chunk of time to be active? Lunchtime, good. I have two breaks. Two breaks, that's good. And a 30 minute. Good. Do you walk during those times? We've discussed that. I have some health problems right now. But... Good, yeah, and absolutely. If you have questions, if you do have health issues or something, please talk to your health coach or talk to us after the session, and we can definitely give you some tips and stuff to do. So. Um, <laughs> Go ahead and fill out the rest of the questions. It says, which activity is it? Where will you be doing the activity? And then look for free time during the day and use it to be active. Page eight. 